Welcome back. This is RGB Dragon with What Gamers Love, and we have a special episode today where I've got a guest here alongside me. Um, this is Harnigat Ostis. He is a, a new-ish player now, I would say, with our corporation, and he has been you know, just super hungry to learn the game and to dive in to help out Corp. So he, he's actually become our lead recruiter. And I mean, he's one of the reasons that the corporation's just really been taken off. So hats off to him for that. And um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, as we were chatting about stuff, we, we came up with this idea that maybe we would do a series that was called New Bro Ask a Vet and just kind of run around, ask some questions, do some anecdotes, and just kind of talk about the game in general. So um, that's what we have in store for this episode. So thanks for joining. Thank you for having me. Should be fun. Should be fun. I think it'll be good. So we, we <laughs> did a little bit of prep with some questions and stuff. So I, we I think we've yeah. got some good stuff to go over. But uh, before we dive into that, um, what I wanted to do is uh, if you're a new bro, new bro yourself, veteran, whatever, um, if you've got some questions yourself that you'd like to see us answer, or if you've got some ideas for upcoming video content, uh, we'd love to see some suggestions. So why don't you throw that down in the comments down below? And of course, um, we would really appreciate you helping the channel grow by liking or subscribing and hit that little notification bell. So with that, we will dive into some questions. Um, yeah, so one of the things that I always act like asking new players is, you know, this game is like 18 years old or something now. Like what prompted you to give Eve a try? Um, I've always wanted to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like I've always wanted to. I've, like it was probably only until about the end of last year that I actually had a computer like good enough to do it. I was never really a PC uh, player up until then. I could manage like super low spec Total War games and <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think like of Total that. War as like a low spec game. I mean, with like troops everywhere, and you can. There's a thing called playing in potato mode in Eve. So I mean, oh yeah, you could have yeah, joined yeah, yeah. sooner than you thought. I think <laughs> I I probably could have, but I think I wanted to do it justice as well. Yeah, yeah, and it's that's like, fair. It's so beautiful. Like, come on. <laughs> the game is um, really pretty in a lot of ways. Yeah, it really is. Um, so COVID comes around. Um, you know, I we end up getting a bit more money from our government. And so I go, right, well, I'm going to start building a, a battle slash uh, workstation. Nice. Um, so so just, it's work from home, but it's also like, yeah, I'm working from home, playing, playing some, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I hear you. Compartmentalizing from home. That's right. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, so yeah, COVID comes along. We get a bit more money from our government, and I decide, yep, now's the time. Um, it's about six months after finishing building the thing that it occurs to me, like <gasps> Eve, because <laughs> so, I'm sitting around like wondering what I should be doing with myself. So yeah, at the moment, another lockdown comes in, and we're like, oh. All right, here we go. Um, and yeah, no, it, was, it just made sense. Yeah. Just made sense. Yeah, it's um, one of those things where it's like, I didn't start playing it even until like 2010, I think it is. And I had for years like heard about this game and like you'd see news stories pop up and like PC Gamer or things like that. You'd be like, wow, this sounds like really compelling. And I never got to it, never got to it until... Like, I don't even remember how, but some friend or, or a forum that I was on, they were talking about, I was like, okay, I'll give it a try now. And, um, oh yeah, yeah, totally worth it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, it's just, it's just so easy to do when like you're working from home yeah. and you're studying from home and stuff as well. And that's something I've noticed about a lot of the players in EVE Online at the moment is most of them are, you know, working from home and doing all that kind of thing. Yeah. It's it's so easy to just, you know, jump into a mining ship and blab some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's definitely true. Yeah, no, we I know we have a few guys that are like, Yeah, I'm totally should be working right now and while I do emails, I'm gonna go out and mine or do whatever the case is. Yeah, yeah. They're just sitting there online and like occasionally answering chat and stuff like that, even though they might not like actually be playing the game, they're still kind of playing the game. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Eve's interesting in that you can play the game in so many different ways. Like, I mean, even with like managing the corporation and doing recruiting, it's like sometimes I'm playing the game and it's just through Discord and the forums and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Yep. How do I find good Eve learning content online? Yeah, so, I mean, with online, there's so many avenues for exploring different stuff. But I'd say the biggest resources, you know, if I were to give you a few, would be the Eve forums themselves, 
Reddit can be a good source, although there is a lot of cancer and a lot of just memes and stuff like that. But like the Eve newbies, I think is the Reddit, um, has a lot of good information specifically for new players. And then YouTube's mm. fantastic. I mean, YouTube is really good. Um, one of the things that's interesting about YouTube is when I search for like content on YouTube, sometimes it's all generated towards veteran players. Like if you want to look up exploration mm. something, it's like the ships may not really, the ships and fits, they're like not new player friendly, right? Or they're running really like high end content. And so, yeah. so yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, like, I don't know, what's been your experience as a new player? Like what's worked for you? I mean, I've, I've watched all those videos. Yeah. Um, like I've jumped in those, I've jumped in those ships with those fits that, you know, everyone would gar guaranteed me would work. Right. You know, the first time <laughs> and I'd start making great isk and all of that. And um, majority of the time it's like, it's no. <laughs> no. Well, sometimes you no, can't even fly like the that. ship yet, right? So, it's, so that's yeah, discouraging. Like, or you're going off I don't off, even know like, what this thing is. Yeah. I see like new players in our corporation all the time. Like I'll pull up the kills that our corp suffers and I'll see new players in ventures like dying in wormholes or trying to go in a retriever into low second mine. I'm like, dudes, what are we doing? Like slow down, tap the brakes. Yeah. Like yeah. you got some like learn you gotta build up to a lot of things in this game. It's a game about That's right. patience yeah, yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. So I, I got very frustrated with um, learning content as, you know, as a brand brand new player to the game. Um so, you know, it was either sit through something for 17 minutes <laughs> that wasn't very engaging. Right. Or, you know, um, be completely misled because uh, as I found out, uh, a lot of the times when they're giving this advice, it's only relevant for that time period as well. Oh, yeah. Like the, the material's dated or whatever. Yeah. 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 There's ship changes and things like that. Like that happens to me. I fly um, Tengu's a lot doing PVE stuff. And there was mm. a big change to the T3 cruisers where they dropped one of the subsystems. And I think they went from five to four. And so it's like, if you go back and you find something before that change, it's like, it's totally wrong. It just doesn't even match up anymore. And yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. You can be really confused as a new player. But, but what goes on YouTube stays on YouTube. Yeah. So, so in those scenarios, like when I know something like that could be at play, like Marauders, Marauders had a big change a month ago or something like that. Um, yeah. So I'll do a Google search first and under Google, you, you can say, hey, only search for stuff from like the last year. And that'll yeah, include yeah. video results and blog results and stuff like that. And um, that can help a little bit in that, that situation. OK, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we we're having a chat at some point where um, we suggested to me to not necessarily take any any online guides as gospel. Right. But as like a, a point of focus. Yeah. It's like a jumping off point. Like, and I think that that's helpful too, is because like the more you can think for yourself about something, it's great. It's so like, if you find a fit, it's like, okay, I could copy and paste this and never think for myself. But if I mm. use it as like, maybe like a baseline as a starting point, and then I like read through, it's like, does this make sense? That can be helpful. Plus also having a good community. I mean, I see so many people, you know, in our Discord ask for questions and veterans help out and stuff like that. But Yeah. No, it's it's really, really good. I think I've learned more from people than I have from content. Okay. So like yeah, joining sure. joining a good corporation and all that, that's been helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I see that that's often advice that, that old players will give and certainly, you know, running a corporation, the two of us are going to say that's a great thing, but but it really is helpful to find, <laughs> like, a group of people that do or are interested in the stuff that you're interested in so that, like, when you've got questions, you can directly ask, like, hey, guys, if I want to go into a wormhole with an Astero, what do I do? And there's going to be someone who's done it, they've already got fit saved and things like that, yeah. Yeah, and they can tell you those... They can tell you those slight increments, you know, those those things that you'll never be able to figure out until you've done it, right? And messed it up. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, the game is an interesting game of balance. It's like you want to push the envelope, right? Because you want to like go do the new stuff, mm. or you want to make more money for the same activity, right? So you're always balancing doing it a little bit riskier for more reward. But then if you like go too far too fast, you just die and you get pissed, or you know, you yeah, kind of start yeah, back sure. at zero and lose all your money. So, all right, so. As a new player, what would you say has been the most challenging aspect of EVE, like from day one through the first month or so? I think number one was finding a corp. 
yeah. I think it was um, like I went on e forums after doing some research online like how do i find these people because yeah. um my only experience with it so far was like the recruitment tab in the in oh the, the in-game like... box in eve <laughs> that's ha- that's a hammered bananas mess man it's yeah yeah for sure <laughs> um and it's just like you know um getting russian spam ads in my eve mailboxes and, oh yeah um, I don't know how those was, people do that. Somehow they like copy all the names and mass do these emails. And it's like, once you've gotten that one time, you're like, nope, never doing that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was just going to ask, like, you know, if, if finding the right corp is a challenge, I mean, what would you say? Like, how did you find the right fit? What was important? But yeah, they have to give a shit. They, they really do have to, um, like, I have to feel like I'm going to be with people. You know, it's not going to be a job. Right. It's not. Um, like you hear all these, you hear about all these scams and everything, and it, it's really, as a new bro coming in, it's very, very intimidating because it's kind of overwhelming, like all of this stuff. Yeah, because um, like you, you're staring a hundred things in the face, and <laughs> it, you know they they all want you, but they don't really. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So I mean, um, some of the corporations are just so massive. Like you see people that go yeah. and join like a big Nolsec blob or whatever, and it's like I'm just a number, man. Like I'm a line mm. member, and that's it. But that's right, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, once I was on Corp, you know, I'm, I'm I live in Australia, like um, AUTZ, <laughs> and um, I had a few corps messaging me based on an ad that I'd put up. Yep. I tried to. I tried to be as genuine as possible after reading some advice online. Um, and uh, a couple of corps got back to me. One was an Australian corp, a bunch yep. of mates um, over in the Eastern States, just uh, getting together and sort of playing. And I'm like, okay, cool, but kind of want to go somewhere with it. Yeah. And another one that sounded great, um, they'd contacted me and they, you know, I told them I was like fresh in the game. They're like, cool, cool, come jump in at public Discord. I'm like, yeah, great. I go in there, have a chat with their CEO, and turns out they're only accepting players with a million skill points. Yeah. It's like, and you had you not invited me. Buddy and so you were like, <laughs> you invited me here. What's the deal? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but I didn't understand that at the time. I, I, right. I had no idea what a referral link was. Sure. Um, <laughs> I had just joined the game and just jumped in feet first. So, right. It was a steep learning curve, and that was oh, that yeah. was probably one of the other difficult parts of it as well. So, you know, you found me yeah. um, after looking through all these posts. I'm just like, oh, I can't deal with this right now. <laughs> I came off. Uh, I just like jumped back into the game, and there's a there's a message from RGB Dragon, and I'm just like, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. yeah. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. All the things you didn't even know to know. It's like crazy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I mean, it's interesting because I am definitely not Australian time zone. So I'm in the US. um, And so it is actually kind of funny because we're like almost exactly 12 hours apart from each other. Um, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So normally I would tell new players to like find find core that's like in the same time zone as you. But, you know, we both work from home. So our time actually overlaps more than you might think. But... But yeah, I mean, finding a good corp, in my opinion, is all about finding a group of people that um, they're interested in the same things as you are. They're willing to like help players out, particularly new players, right? Because there's just so much that the game can be really overwhelming. So helping you like bite it off into chunks. If you can bite it off into chunks, you can like take steps and learn, and and then slowly like the world of, of Eve kind of expands even more. But it's like if you try to bite off too much at once, you you're gonna fail like disastrously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure yeah so what would be your tips for looking for a corp yeah i mean i think the best places to find a corp are you kind of did you know the first one i'd say is eforums that's a great place but like so i think you had posted like hey i'm looking for a corp 
and people ignore that and they just like jump all over it like you'll, you'll put in there like hey i'm a new player i only want to do high second mining let's just say that's what you put in there you're gonna get yeah. null set corpse bombarding you you're gonna get pvp corpse They're like oh well pvp <laughs> is actually really fun and you should do this it's like i said i wanted yeah. to mine bro i don't want to blow up ships or whatever the case is mm. and people just like bombard you with all sorts of stuff so I honestly would hop on the e forums and read through other corporations like actual posts to see what they say they're about and then I would go and join their public discord or if they have an in-game public chat channel or whatever I'm a big fan of discord because it's just a lot easier to manage in my opinion but mm -hmm. um, and I would talk to them and feel them out a little bit you know it's like because you'll learn pretty quick if people are who they say they are yeah so that would be yeah the, yeah the, for the sure things I would do I mean, Reddit is good too. There's an Eve Jobs uh, section on Reddit. That's another good place. But again, I probably wouldn't post a message as a new player. I would read other corpse advertisements and see who's the right fit. Yeah, yeah. Like, would you would you recommend looking for a small corp or a big corp? Like, what are the differences? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, there's... as far as a smaller player is concerned. Well, yeah. Concerned. So for a smaller player, like, in order to get some individual attention right and to get your questions answered like mm -hmm. honestly a smaller to medium size is usually best now there are some big corporations that focus on new players like seco eve university brave newbies and they have a lot of really good resources but if you join when they're doing a recruiting wave and you're one of a hundred new players that join that week you're gonna get lost in the shuffle now if you're a really proactive person you can carve out the opportunities but it's like if you're not that proactive and say you, you're kind of more of a quiet type, like you're going to get lost in the shuffle. And so small, medium corps are just going to be really helpful to like give you a little bit more attention, answer your questions, stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. So one of the things, so I asked you about your most challenging, what would you say has been your most like fun or like what's been really awesome so far about playing Eve? Going to de defend a wormhole alliance corp. Oh, yeah. Was a lot of fun. Even though, even um, though there was like no content that showed up. <laughs> that's that's right. Yeah, it was it was a whole it was a bust. The whole thing was a bust. But it, it was such a for us, we were so new to this, and it was such a sneaky affair. Yeah. And like, um, like you made some really good judgment calls. You were you were on top of things. You were kind of guiding us through all these alternate routes, and like, and then um, like you'd go, oh no, hang on a second, guys. You know we've got this happening, so let's uh, <laughs> let's go this way and come back around and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, just where getting we had this... there is a part of the journey, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and then we get yeah, there, yeah. there's nothing happening. But I think everybody learned a lot. I mean, I, it was yeah. like, I think for five people, their first trips into not only like low sec, but then wormholes also. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we dodged a gate yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah. We did um, salutes to, we had a suicide scout that had to die on a gate camp for us. Um, but he wears that badge with pride, I think. So yeah, he got a, he got a medal for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is kind of fun. I don't see people do like the decorations a whole lot in Eve, but you can create all these cool like custom decorations and give them out. They're super fun. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so I like doing that. He he wears that with pride. Yeah, too. he, does. <laughs> he totally. boasts about it so much. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, no, it was it was good. Like even though we didn't see any combat at the time, it it felt good to be like part of that team and that kind of calm before the storm thing it was like yeah. yeah it was slightly frustrating at the end but um like there was so much tension like navigating those systems and knowing that there were like any number of these guys out to get us yeah it's like and at then, any point we might jump through this gate and just like yeah <laughs> someone's there waiting to blap us so did you yeah, get yeah, the yeah. pvp shakes i did you did yeah i got them Fess yeah up. it was no. good yeah yeah well this is this is like four in the morning for me too like oh I'm, yeah i've gone uh, <laughs> i'm like how when do I, you sleep man <laughs> um uh yeah, just when yeah when i get it <laughs> <laughs> right well, sometimes um, you'll like you'll like sleep for a few hours join up with like a fleet off or something and then sleep again right that's exactly what i did yeah, yeah. um yeah, sometimes. I, uh, not so much these days, but I, I figured for my first PvP thing. Yeah. Because it was so it was so spontaneous too. It was like Yeah. You just, you just like uh you just chucked it as all of a sudden and I'm just like, yes, finally. Yes, let's jump on this. We had enough like, people that I think were like super excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like that's 
that's why you come to EVE Online, right? Is that's that's the end goal. You want to see these massive fleet battles that are that yeah. make up the identity and like at least the marketing of the game. Right, right. Very cool. Yeah, no, we we that that's what's interesting about the game. It's like we have all this in-game stuff, and then we had some people out of game through like a different Discord server that kind of put out a rallying cry. So it's like, hey guys. If we're interested, we can go jump on this thing like right now. And everyone's like, hell yeah, let's do it. So it's like, all right, <laughs> let's, let's go time. But all right. So I've heard this a lot. Um, and it's like, it's the name of our alliance and everything as well. Like we, we're called AIP um, Alliance. So I think it stands for always ISK positive. And yeah, you have a bit of right. a philosophy behind that, don't you? I do. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the things that, you know, everyone says in the game, like, don't fly something unless you can afford to, like, replace it or whatever. Don't fly something you can't afford to lose. So it's kind of built on that idea, but it's honestly got a little bit more latent into it about, like, balance with stuff. So, like, mm. in my idea with always this positive is, like, you never want to do something that's so risky that you're, like, you train up, you get into, like, some new, like, super shiny ship. And you immediately go out and just do something reckless with it and you lose it, right? That I've seen so many people rage quit in the game over stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like, for, whether that's new players or vets or, or I mean, both. Um, but then I also see people that are like, oh, it's like I have this cool thing, but like I never want to fly it. Like, because I don't want to, I don't want to lose it. And it's like, well, that, that kind of sucks too. Like, this is a game. Like, you should have fun with the things you do. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. the best example I have for this is um, when I first got into Nullsec Life a couple years ago and I skilled up to get a carrier so I could do carrier routing and I always wanted to fly one. The Thanatos I thought was such a cool ship. So I skilled up, I, I did all this investment to get it and I was like, okay, I can't like lose this thing right out of the gate. So like, so yeah, what yeah, I yeah. did was is I just, I educated myself on like how to do it so that I wouldn't lose it, right? So I spent a little time to do it safely and then yeah, I think over the, the next couple of weeks even, I mean, I, I earned so much money ratting in that carrier that it got to the point where I had a second carrier in the hangar ready to go just in case I lost it. So, like, it was kind of already replaced at that point, and I was ISK positive on, like, that experience. And yeah. so, so that was kind of this, like, big relief, and I felt like it opened the door that I could... I could just play the game and not be worried all the time, right? Yeah, So yeah, yeah. we had, um, at the time, I was in CVA, we were in Pravi... And I think there was like, I think there was a CTA op or something like that. And, and I was like, hell yeah, I'll, I'll load up my PVP fit on the carrier and I'll go jump it over here. Um, Cause I didn't, I didn't care at that point if I lost it. Right. Because yeah, I had yeah. played, like I, I was careful kind of at the beginning. I, I wasn't too f afraid to fly it, but I, I made money from it. So, so that was kind of the idea was, you know, try to be as positive. You're, never always going to be right when you initially invest in something you're going to dip way down on funds but just yeah, don't yeah. lose it right away right <laughs> yeah 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 so it's kind of be responsible have fun it's a game but yeah it's just a goal like try to be as positive with what you do so of course yeah so as it's, a it's new not player even... how does that like resonate with you well at first i always just thought it was like a okay so always make money yeah but now now i'm kind of now I'm kind of starting to see it as like, it's, it's not just a, it's not just like a financial advice thing. It's also like a, um, it, it's, it's kind of like a being ISK positive is also about your outlook. Yeah. Um, which I'll be honest has, uh, which has sort of changed the way that I play yeah. as well. Um, cause I was, I was thinking about, like a lot of the stuff that I was doing and I'm going, I'm not being very ISK positive, am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I threw, I flew a, uh, 140 million, uh, million ISK, um, cruiser into my first abyssal, abyssal dead space. Yep. Your fleet stabber, um, your fleet issue my stabber. Fleet stabber or, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Most expensive, everything I could afford at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, didn't I started you the game to launch your drones. I did. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I wasn't even, yeah, I wasn't even going for the cans. Um, I was just, uh, flying around after the ships trying to catch them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a, it was a bad time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, like the, the idea the mantra is not like, dude, don't do that. It's like, just, just make sure you know enough of what you're doing. Right. So you don't yeah. lose the ship for no, like 
uh, no, just a stupid reason right out of the gate. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was like a great learning experience for me. Oh, sure. Because well, one, do your research. Yep. Um, two, this is going to happen a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. Be in this game, to lose ships and stuff. Totally. <laughs> like you've you've got to be okay with losing a lot of stuff that you worked very hard for. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, at the drop of a hat. Yeah. And um, like I was so mad to begin with, and I, I came back later and I sat down and I just laughed. Like yeah. I just started laughing at the, <laughs> the hilarity of the whole thing, just going like, why, why did I do that? <laughs> I mean, you learned something from it. The other thing I'd say is it, you don't have to be as positive. Like, like we're talking so far about like just one activity, right? But it could yeah. be multiple activities. So it's like I could be the world's worst PvP player and just absolutely love losing ships right maybe that just gives me shakes and i love it who cares if i go say i rat or do something else that i enjoy doing and i make a lot of money and i'm easily affording to go lose 10 ships a week or whatever like it doesn't matter like who cares but if you were really bad at pvp and you loved it and you had no way to make money like you wouldn't be able to feed the activity right that's right so so yeah Uh, one thing i'd say though and i always have to throw out this caution in um you know, the whole, like, should I plex my account discussion. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, in my opinion, particularly as advice to new players, I would not focus on plexing your account. That The mm. biggest risk is that I see people kind of turn the game into a job and their enjoyment just goes way down and people get burned out super fast. But, yeah, like, yeah. EVE has this unique, like, facet to it where it's, like, every activity you can kind of do in a low risk, low reward setting, and then you can ramp up that activity to like a high risk, high reward. So everyone almost always goes immediately straight there, you know, and and you want to push and you want to like grow and do that. But if you're focused on like flexing my account and you immediately go to do all the risky stuff, like it's just not a good experience for for new players. Yeah, because I was was talking to recruits and I, I, I had experienced a couple of them I'm not sure how they got the idea. Maybe there was a topic online or something like that. But um, like they were talking about like buying their Omega, yeah, um, with ISK as an alpha, right? So like working for their working Omega. to earn their Omega or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the idea was just so like oh, for me, it's crazy because yeah. I couldn't imagine the amount of commitment and dedication that would take. Yeah. Well, it's all perspective. I mean, as a new player, a billionist sounds like insurmountable and like, yeah, it sounds like a worthy goal, but like, yeah, honestly, your ability to make money really ramps up quite a bit as you get more experience and more avenues of gameplay are unlocked to you. So yeah, Yeah. I I think it's a cool goal. Like certainly there's people that do that and it's fantastic, but typically I'd say it's got to get your feet underneath you and dude, 15 bucks a month or whatever for Omega it's a pretty damn good deal. Like, and usually what I tell people, it's like, if I'm going to go buy a new AAA release game, that's like $60. And I yeah, can't tell yeah. you the last AAA release that I played for more than a couple weeks, maybe a month. Whereas like, if you, if let's say you started Eve today, you signed up, you get an alpha account, say in two weeks, you start, you know, buying Omega. You've got four months of gameplay before you would get to that $60 AAA price. I mean, that's a fantastic value. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's like, it's not even a subscription. You, yeah, just, you, you just pay for it when you can afford it. it. And yeah, exactly. And you yeah. pay for it one month. You can let it dip down, get it again. Yeah, I've I've played MMOs that um, forced me to pay this money yeah. when I wasn't even sure about the game. Right. And Eve Online is probably the only MMO I'm going to stick around in because I've always gone through that first month period and gone, eh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yep. Yeah. It's like I'm. I'm being. I'm being forced into the learning curve. You know. Right. Um, when you're being forced into the learning curve of a game, it can be disheartening when you don't figure it out at, at first. Um, right. When you're not being forced into the learning curve of a game, uh, you, you feel like you've got the room, the space to to navigate it a bit more. Yeah. Um. I mean, Eve is certainly a wide open sandbox. So, I mean, there's a huge learning curve, but you can definitely, like, you could say, hey, I want to go and explore this avenue and, like, narrow it down and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's handy, too, because it lets you 
lets you figure out those aspects of the game that you really want to pursue. Yep. So, um, I started as Minmatar for those cap-free guns. Yep. I barely understood the, I barely understood the concept at the time. Um, all I knew is that Minmatar sounded very much like Australians, <laughs> all being you know ex-slaves and convicts and stuff. There so. You go. <laughs> So you just signed right up. You're like, oh, that, let's do it. It's it, it resonated. There you um, go. <laughs> and everything slapped together. So um, when I started, I'm like, okay, cool. Um, let's let's see how this works. So you know, I'm starting off with auto guns. I'm trying out missile launchers. And, um, I'm playing around with a bunch of different stuff. And in every other game that I've played, um, I've always liked the idea of like glass cannon tactics. Yeah. So, um, you know, fast, kitey, getting around things, being really far, uh, fast and hit and run. Kind of sniping and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I like, so I, I thought I'd, you know, try out some sniper boats and see how it went. Um, the idea was like, I thought it was awesome. And, you know, I got into some Garista's hunts. It was, it was going all right. And then I upgraded to a cruiser. And at that point, you know, I've got bigger guns on it. I'm like, yeah, let's take this you out. You loaded let's up artillery it. and yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I love the artillery. I love the long range thing. But I couldn't hit anything. <laughs> you can't hit I couldn't the wrong understand side of a why. Barn. It's like, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, that's here? right. Yeah. So, um, so I had a conversation with you about uh, transversal velocity oh, yeah. and tracking speeds on turrets, and uh, like the skills that I would need. Um, like what? What's the best way to translate that? Yeah, um, it's a it's an interesting thing because I don't think I had ever encountered, I mean, transversal velocity or this concept that we're talking about until I played yeah. Eve. And, and so the best illustration that I've got to help people understand this is to think about driving a car down the highway, okay? So if I'm driving a car and let's say I'm going 80 miles an hour, Sorry, I don't know if you have kilometers per hour in Australia. Is yeah, that yeah. yeah, that's right. That's Anyways, I'm driving really fast. I'm driving 80 miles an hour down the highway. And let's say there's a car in front of me that's driving 100 miles an hour. He's driving faster than me, but he's right in front of me. He just passed me, right? And I'm right behind him. So yeah. from a, a standpoint of transversal velocity, he's basically at zero, right? He's not moving laterally across my vision. So he, he looks as if he is stationary. That's how he appears mm. from my perspective. And let's say we're driving down the highway and we're coming up on an overpass. And let's say there's a car driving 30 miles an hour over the overpass, right? And it's perpendicular mm -hmm. to the highway. Yep. From my perspective, they're moving pretty darn fast. They're driving a fraction of the car in front of me speed. But in relation yeah. to me, they're going fast and he's stationary. So now, now imagine, let's say this is like a crime shootout movie. And I pop up out of the sunroof of my car and I'm going to shoot a gun at one of them. <laughs> the car that's going 100 miles an hour really fast but they're driving the same direction as me, I'd be able to shoot them no problem, right? Yes. Whereas the yeah. car going over the overpass, it's only going 30, but in relation to me, that's pretty damn quick. And I'd try to shoot them and I would totally miss. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. essentially yeah. the concept, right? And so when you, you know, if something is out tracking your turrets, right? So tracking speed is how fast your, your gun can move in order to keep up with something that's moving fast in relation to you. So if something is out tracking you, the best thing you can do is to try to match the direction that they're traveling, right? Yeah. And that will yep, yep. lower their transverse, their speed in relation to you, right? So if you yeah. match their direction, you should start hitting them basically. So when you're looking in game and if you target that ship and it'll have like a little blue arrow, that blue arrow is showing you the direction they're going so that then you can try to like double click in space and try to match that. And then yep. the, the length of that arrow is how fast they're moving. So you can use those visual cues and then you can also set up your overview to tell you what the transversal velocities are. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so those two things in, in combination can can really help you start tracking and hitting stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um, how would you how would you work towards mitigating that as well? Yeah, so I mean, you know, you can upgrade your skills. So your gunnery skills, like trajectory analysis and things like that will help improve your tracking. Um, but yeah, I mean, manual piloting, like instead of just orbiting something, manual piloting um, helps, particularly for those types of ships. Um, yeah. Yeah, but uh, did, 
didn't we so i know that you went from like not being able to hit anything in pve and then you made a few tell me some of the adjustments that we had you make and how that worked uh well i stopped using a micro warp drive yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was a big one not yeah, in pve I, I, you don't typically I, I, yeah <laughs> i t yeah i i stopped going uh 1700 miles an hour and um that already made a huge difference yeah um but you know i like it's like my fleet stabber is a armor tank ship um with some pretty good speed as well yeah so with six uh low slots i could afford to probably drop some tank yeah and um focus more on tracking uh, enhancers. throwing in yeah tracking enhancers and um yeah, I've already got my gyro stabilizers in there anyway. Yep. Um, I've got a tracking computer with a script in there as well, um, which I've got active. Um, like I'm a little bit low on cap, but so long as I manage it effectively and, you know, I've got my armor repair and reactive armor going, then it can work really well. Well, I think you were like but, when I looked at your fit, you were like trying to do too many things almost at one point. So like, yeah. I think I explained kind of signature radius and stuff. And so you were a smaller ship for the most part. And so mm -hmm. if you were actually moving, like orbiting something at speed, you can out track them. But the micro warp drive was making you too fast when you did that, so that you also couldn't track. So swapping That's that right. out for an afterburner slowed you down. You didn't have the bloom effect to mess with your signature. And then it's like, yeah, you don't need all the tank at that point if stuff's not hitting you. So you That's can right. make those adjustments. But Yeah. Um, I came to understand optimal range and fall off a lot better as well. Yep. Um, I used to think that anything within the optimal range... Like you'd auto-hit hit it. it or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then it's only one part alpha of the equation. As well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the alpha strikes for the damage bonuses. Um, it works really well now. Awesome. It works really, really well now. Yeah. And if I'm, and now I know if I'm not hitting something, it's something that's within my control to fix. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and that, that as a new bro. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like a big an, achievement, right? Yeah. It's yeah. an awesome feeling. Um, because like you, congrats. You've just uh, figured out one of these <laughs> really big complicated aspects of eve online that right. everyone warns you about you know <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> good stuff yeah very cool well man uh Harnigan, i really appreciate you know you taking the time to answer some questions and chat a little bit about the game that i think we both are really enjoying playing right now and i appreciate um, being here very cool well hopefully we'll continue to learn more stuff together because i'm still learning things every day and, um, you know, like I said at the beginning of the episode, uh, if you guys have any questions you'd love to see answered, drop them down in the comments. We'd love to do more kind of videos like this in the future. And We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you too, though, so let's make it interactive. Awesome. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Y'all fly safe. We'll catch you next time. Peace.